Hey everyone, and welcome back to our inspirational interview series. I'm Hannah Levin with Heartfelt Wellbeing, and I'm super excited for this conversation today with Lisa Broyles, who is a functional medicine doctor who has a lot to say about the current state of medicine in this country and also our future hopes for it. So I'm really excited for this conversation. Feel free to chime in with your questions along the way. And if you're watching the replay, um, you can give us a hashtag replay and feel free to ask your questions as well. So I'm gonna let Lisa introduce herself. So without further ado, here's Lisa. Hello. Hello. I'm Lisa Broyles and I am an MD and I'm certified in functional medicine and super excited to be able to just reach out to you. And I love talking to people. I get pretty excited about functional medicine and just about health that we as as women, as mothers, as wives, as daughters, that we can be more than we are. And especially when we come into community with others and we reach out to different healers, uh, life can really be so much better. So thank yeah. you for allowing me to be on the show. Yeah, I'm super excited to have you here. Can you give us a little more background just about yourself? Like where Absolutely. you're from, what your life looks like and how you came to be in medicine? Yeah, I so I grew up in Asheville, North Carolina, and I currently live in Saluda, North Carolina, which is a tiny little town about 30 minutes south of Asheville. And I've I homestead with my two children and my husband, and we've got ducks and chickens and uh, let's see the pig and the llama and the goats and and uh, we, we fish um, fish out of our own ponds for food and collect our own eggs. I, I try to have my garden for the summers. I, I try to live what I tell my patients to do as far as how I eat, how I live. Uh, you know, I don't think a healer is very effective if they're telling you one thing and they reek of cigarette smoke or they're you know, really not doing it themselves. Uh, but I started this journey uh, in traditional allopathic medical school. And mainly I did that because I really wanted to be a holistic doctor, even as a kid, but I didn't know how to get there. And there are so many different paths that uh, physicians can take. And there's more holistic medical schools called Doctor of Osteopathy or DO instead of MD, but North Carolina does not have a DO school. And so I wanted to stay in state to keep my costs down because I knew that I never wanted to be a specialist so my reimbursement wouldn't be high. So I would need to go to a school in state so that I could someday pay off my medical school loans. So I thought, okay, I'll just go to a good old medical school. I went to East Carolina School of Medicine in Greenville, North Carolina. And I have to say it was a fabulous foundation. There is nothing to do in Greenville but study. <laughs> <laughs> You're two hours from the beach, but boy, the mosquitoes are big and there's not much to do. So uh, it was a wonderful school. And then after my family medicine residency, I spent six years doing family medicine, just good old traditional family medicine in Johnson City, Tennessee. And I became really unhappy with how many patients I couldn't help. The patients mm -hmm. that came to me and said, I am so tired and yet my doctor says my thyroid's fine, but I feel like it's not. And, and or do, people that came with mold issues or autoimmune disease or irritable bowel, and I, I couldn't fix them. I, I'd write the pills that I was taught to prescribe and they weren't getting better. And I, I felt so stuck with so many people that I couldn't help. And so I started looking into other options and a chiropractor friend introduced me to functional medicine, of which I'm so grateful. So uh, while I was working full time, I also was doing an online course in functional medicine and it took me about a year and a half, got that done and it completely blew my mind. I was like, here is the key that I have been missing. This takes those first few years of medical school where I learned how the body works and it actually applies it. I mean, go figure. That's unfortunately not how medicine works. We mm -hmm. are taught we are taught how the body works, but then you're not taught how to make the organs heal themselves or give them back the nutrients that they need, or how to rebalance. That's not what uh, Amer unfortunately, American medicine is all about if a plant is withering, you just chop off the leaves instead of actually giving it water and fertilizer. And so Functional medicine taught me, hey, let's look at 
what is broken and figure out what went wrong in this patient's history. Was there a toxin? Was there an infection? Was there a virus? Can I fix that? Can I make the thyroid more functional if I give this person some iodine or some selenium? Or maybe I can give them some bioidentical hormone therapy to rejuvenate that skin and help that memory or you know, the people that are at risk for Alzheimer's, you can actually do genetic testing now to see if you have a genetic risk risk for it, if you have a family member with it, and then prevent it from ever happening to you. And so there is a true power in functional medicine. And it, it totally blew apart the boxes that medical school taught me to put patients in and forced me to see each patient patient as an individual and say, okay, let's look at your specific background and let's figure out how to get you to a happy state of wellness that's unique for you. And that's yeah. not what how medical students are taught to think. But right. I I have spent four years now doing family medicine here in Saluda where I was trying to integrate functional medicine. And I really wanted to try to work within the insurance framework because I was so concerned about people not being able to afford functional medicine. And as you probably know, it's extremely expensive to see most functional medicine clinics. And the reason for that is that insurance does not cover, uh, they don't cover the time that we need to spend with you. They don't cover most of the tests that we need to look at. You know, I learned a long time ago that if a test does not show something, then the patient is not making it up. They're not crazy. It's that we're looking at the wrong tests, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I, I feel like the past four years were almost like a residency for me in functional medicine. To I, I had one foot still in traditional medicine, still in the insurance network, seeing 16 to 18 people a day, which was crazy mm -hmm. hard to do with functional medicine and trying to do family medicine in that framework. And after four years, it was really starting to break me emotionally and uh, spiritually, just the confines of the system on doctors are, are extremely difficult. And being told how many patients you have to see a day and 30 minutes is too much. You need to see people every 15 minutes. Right. And how in the world can you get to know someone and truly help them if you only end up with five to seven minutes with them and then are told you're only supposed to address one issue today and have them come back and reschedule right. for their other visit? That's not even human. I no. And that's what our medical students and our residents are being taught that we're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's impossible, actually. I love so much of what you're saying because it's totally aligned with how I practice as well, you know, that we look at each person as their own individual universe. There are some general mm -hmm. things that are might be common with multiple people, but really everybody is a unique microcosm and mm -hmm. that when we we can't separate out i mean you know that point of saying you can only address mm -hmm. one thing but when mm -hmm. when you know that everything is connected and mm -hmm. you have to look upstream and downstream then you start right. connecting the dots right and that mm -hmm. connecting the dots doesn't let you look at one thing because the one thing is just one of those dots that right. is connected it's exactly. powerful I try to teach my patients that inflammation is a whole body problem. You know, if you are hypothyroid, you probably started out with, you know, possibly eczema or diabetes or gluten intolerance. And then those things led to the hypothyroidism. And then, you know, further down the, the road, you may end up developing peripheral neuropathies or, or God forbid, MS. You know, there, there, there are progressions of inflammation and people, doctors, don't understand that. So they can't teach their patients that, that the, right. you have to look at the whole body and every system plays in with the others to create the whole picture. And, you know, yeah. people ask me all the time, well, doc, how, what diet should I be on? I'm like, well, that depends on you. And we need, we yeah. need to look at your genetics and your nutrition. And before I can tell you which diet you should be on, you know? Right. So. Yeah. It's very individual. Absolutely. Yeah. And that there's this, um, this bigger picture in, in Ayurveda, there's a, a word for the pathogenesis or that process of disease that's called some property. And the way that mm -hmm. I teach it is like, it's like the little tiny whispers that your body starts telling you, you know, before you get a diagnosis from a Western um 
you know, yeah. doctor, there's many, many, many things that have been whispering mm-hmm. to you in, in your body, yes. whether it's digestive distress or insomnia mm-hmm. or fatigue or headaches, mm-hmm. you know, that we just kind of push aside horrible PMS or, you know, but that your body starts talking louder and louder and louder and louder until you finally listen. right? And then we need to back up and say like, well, when did something start feeling uncomfortable? You know, for many of us, like for me, I can look back to childhood for a lot Mm -hmm. of the things that I have now healed in my Mm forties, right. Right. That I lived for decades with, with challenges. Can you, Mm -hmm. um, just define for folks who may not be familiar with functional medicine, mm-hmm. just give us a, a simple definition of what functional sure. medicine is. I would love to. Functional okay. medicine for me is applied biochemistry. It is learning about how you tick as far as I want to know, you know, how many how many times you were on antibiotics as a child. You, I want to know what infections you had as a child. I want to know what environmental exposures you have in your work. It's looking at the whole person and taking that and saying, okay, how did that create the disease states that you currently have and the health challenges that you currently have? And then how can we make that right through nutritional supplementation, through fixing hormone deprivations? Uh, do we need to remove toxins? Do we need to fix lifestyle changes? Let's fix the exercise. Let's fix the diet. Let's fix the spiritual aspect of how your body affects your emotions. Your look, functional medicine is about looking at the whole person and creating an individualized plan for your health. So I do my best not to just write prescriptions for things and send people to specialists. And I will say there is a time and place where we need, everyone needs a cardiologist or, uh, you know, an oncologist, those, that happens. But so much like Hannah was saying, if you listen to your body, when it first starts to tell you something's wrong, you can catch things and fix them before they become permanent. So I love catching people, the younger, the better, because there's so much I can do. And that's not to say even in your eighties that things can't change, but when an organ has been diseased for 40 or 50 years, some of those changes can become irreversible. Yeah. Yeah. It can be challenging. So yeah, Um, like looking at the whole whole system. And yeah, I love that, that frustration. I really hear it in your voice of like, how am I supposed to only see a patient for 10, 15 minutes and be able to treat them? And, you know, so many people come to me, I know with, with labels and diagnoses, and I'm often like, let's put that aside. And I want to know what your experience is, right? Like Mm -hmm. what, what are you experiencing daily? What is, is frustrating to you Mm -hmm. in your life? And I do two hour intakes with my clients, you know? So it's like that, that juxtaposition of like really getting to know. And so many people say, I've never had somebody ask me these many questions. Like you understand more about me than my doctor does. Right. Right. And so I love that you are going there. Well, most functional medicine doctors spend about two hours with their new intakes because that is what it takes to kind of at least just start to understand what's going on with someone and really be able to help them. Uh, And, you know, I was I got 45 minutes for new patients, sometimes an hour, and then I got 30 minutes for follow ups. And that's still including your check in with your nurse and the receptionist. So it was really hard to try to really delve into people's history with that. But I was so committed to trying because I was trying to still stay in network for people's insurance. And that was really important mm-hmm. to me. But I, I realized I came to the point where I was like, it's not worth it anymore. I'm so I'm getting emotionally unhealthy myself with the amount of stress. I got to the point where I had close to a thousand patients and I was only working two days a week and my employer still wanted me to take on more new patients. And basically it was like, you either need to work full time or you need to see more patients a day. And at that point I had to turn in my notice and say, I can't do that anymore Um, to still be the kind of healer that my patients deserve and are asking for. I can't do that. And so it was a really, I struggled. It was about a six month. What am I going to do? Should I, should I leave the insurance system? Uh, And I finally came to the place where I just, I had to, um, and I I'm just doing cash-based services now. Unfortunately, a lot of people have health savings accounts and can use that to get reimbursed. And I think younger people are realizing that our our medical system is so broken and it's not Mm -hmm. patient 
focused. It's not focused on prevention, not even a little bit, you know, and so until our insurance companies reimburse doctors for time, I don't really see that changing. They they reimburse for procedures, you know, sur- surgeries and hospitalizations. And and I'm not saying even they you know, the hospitals are suffering right now too, but uh, a doctor's time is the lowest value as far as insurance goes. And so unfortunately, most family practices are not even able to stay open to break even unless they're seeing 20 to 25 patients a day because the Mm -hmm. insurance reimbursement is so incredibly low and it's the lowest for Medicare, Medicaid. And that's why a lot of practices have to limit those because they they're losing money on each of those patients that they take. So. Mm. Yeah. Well, good for you for saying I still want to help people and I don't want to participate in this system. That I I want to create a different system. So tell us a little bit about more about what you're doing now. So, and I'm not techie. I've had to learn how to use Zoom and what is a webcam. And this is, this has been a steep learning curve for somebody that I I really love the in-person looking someone in the eye and being able to touch them. And I I love Mm. that aspect. Um, but you know we do live in the age of the internet and i had to just step it up and realize i can reach more people if i do learn how to use this computer and my and uh, it's and it's starting to be fun and i have to say as a mother it is much easier for being able to take my children to school i've got a 10 year old daughter and a 15 year old son and being able to pick them up from school and take them to wrestling practice or you know, play practice, whatever they have. It's really fulfilling to me as a mother to have my time to work during the day and yet be available at three o'clock when my kids are needing me and be able to make a healthy, nutritious meal for my family. I mean, that takes time to not mm-hmm. just buy Sam's and throw it in the in the oven. You have to have time. And I think that our society, I, I'm glad that women are in the workforce, I really am, but there needs to be a balance for us that it's okay to work from home or to be a, at, at home with our children. And um, that's healthy and our families need us too. And so I have found that this is incredibly healing for me, just having the balance of still getting to help people through Zoom consults um, or if there's people that are local, um, you know, being able to go to someone's house and do a fun house call. That's really, really, really fun. And the old fashioned doctors. <laughs> Absolutely. So you can, I, there's touches of it and being my own boss is pretty cool. Uh, getting to set my own hours, but basically I've, I've got a website and people can either join my website as members and be able to see I'm creating videos. So I'm uploading videos to YouTube as unlisted, and then they're only available to my members through my website. And these videos are my functional medicine protocols for various conditions. Hmm. And I'm going to try to build that content up. I know you've been doing this for a few years, so you probably have a yeah. lot of content. And I'm, yes. I'm just Starting, but I'll slowly build a nice uh, library of content so that if you do need your functional medicine doctor and it's 10 o'clock at night and you just got the call from the health department that you have COVID, you could log in as a member and click on my, what do you do? I have COVID video. Five minutes later, you've got all the supplement information you need. So I'm trying to develop that. And my husband is an incredible cook. Uh, He's actually an emergency medicine doctor, but he loves to cook. And I've been challenging them to make really healthy food that actually tastes good because uh, the two don't always align, as you know. So uh, so I'm posting recipes that he's developed that uh, our children have taste tested and approved. And and uh, it's it's really fun. I'm also doing consults as people want them and just having that freedom to to be healthy myself. I can take the children to school and then I come home and I work out. I go running. Uh, I have time either with girlfriends or with myself. I can do yoga. I can start my day and be done in time to pick up my children. That's incredible. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there is. um so much pressure in our culture to okay. to do more and to yeah like faster 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 i was listening mm-hmm. to a podcast um on sunday about 
about slowing down. And also, you know, I teach so much about the seasons and winter is the season mm -hmm. of rest. Right? Right. And how many of us beat ourselves up because we're like, I need to be just as productive and just as motivated and just as driven in the winter as I am in the summer mm -hmm. that we don't actually allow ourselves a chance to rest or to, to kind of pull back and take the long view, like the big picture of our lives and be like, Absolutely. actually, like, what mm -hmm. am I teaching my children? What am I, you know, right. how am I showing up in the world in a way that is not in alignment with what I teach? You know, mm -hmm. I think that is a beautiful thing, you know, for me too, it's like, I get to practice what I'm teaching other people mm -hmm. um, and, and model what that looks like, like going to bed mm -hmm. early, waking up before the sunrise, right? Like these, mm -hmm. these rhythms that we can be in that then help us be so vibrant. But when we're being pushed by specifically a system, that's like, mm -hmm. you have this label, now you have to show up in this box. It can be really, really oh. challenging. And again, I just mm -hmm. applaud you for saying, I'm going to, I'm going to do my own thing thank you. and, and yeah, go, thank go you. for it. I think yeah. as, yeah, we all have seasons and, and yeah. I feel like each stage of my life has been what it was meant to be at that time. And it has taught me good things and that this is the season this is kind of a culmination for me of many seasons coming together to birth something new and hopefully beautiful and exciting that I can reach more people but also model that lifestyle for them and say hey I'm this is possible and you can be a 43 year old mother with children and still love your job and your life and be healthy and functional and this is how to do it so. Yeah. Awesome. We're the 43 year olds doing this. Yes. I'm 43. Yeah. Also. Um, I, I am curious just to hear your thoughts about what do you see as the future of medicine? Um, We're dealing with a broken system. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we are. And I think that American medicine is moving towards kind of a Medicare for all type system. I think Americans want free health care, but they don't want to pay for it in their taxes. And that's the hard truth. And if you look at um, most of the countries that have a free government type of health insurance, they pay higher taxes than we do. Um, and that goes into that. But they And they also don't have the lawyer-driven malpractice costs um, that we do. So you know, doctors here in America, for me to go out on my own business, my malpractice insurance is definitely my highest monthly cost just to do this, uh, the, the online consulting is still incredibly expensive in case I get sued. And that's every doctor is so afraid of that, that it's really driven up the cost here in our country. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know how that's gonna, I don't see that changing anytime soon. The other thing that's driving the cost of, of medicine up in this country is that it's incredibly expensive to become a doctor. Uh, mm -hmm. My husband is an ER doctor, like I said, and we came out with $300,000 in loans just from his mm -hmm. four years. And you add that to my four years. And between the two of us, we've got over a half million dollars in debt. That how can we pay that off? You know, and, and so your doctors, they spend 10 years of their lives and they indebt themselves. And um, and they're really pushed to their limit emotionally. I remember doing 24 hours of hospital care and then having to see patients in clinic for an additional six hours. And by the end of 30 solid hours, I couldn't even think straight, much less hardly drive myself home. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's, I think it's extremely, you come out of that, uh, it's easy to come out of that damaged emotionally, yeah. come out bitter, feeling like I deserve a certain lifestyle and a certain you know thing in life because I've suffered so much to do this. And that's a really sad place for doctors to start out, yeah. you know, and and so I think that we're going to end up with this free healthcare system that everyone's going to hate, to be honest, because they're going to have mm. long waits to see a specialist and uh, expensive medicines probably won't be within their reach. And then there will be the cash system outside of it. And already holistic doctors like myself are being pushed out of the system because we want to spend time with people. And, and we realize that medicine is an art and a science and the two can be one. And, and so you can't put patients in these boxes. And as far as insurance companies go, I, I'm sure that doctors like myself that aren't going to write every diabetic a cholesterol lowering medication called a statin just because we're told that we should. Well, you should look at Good. each person individually. And I mean, that's one of the boxes that they're to we are told to put people in. And they're not, they're not safe for a lot of people. And, and so 
I think that Americans are crying out for a more personalized, a more individualized medicine. And as more companies offer health savings accounts and flexible ways that patients can pay for their health care, I think it will be more affordable to see holistic providers. But insurance, if they would also cover chiropractors and you know your Ayurvedic healers, if they would if they would help us to afford prevention and massage therapy, we would as a system just save billions in overall costs. Just looking at like pain management alone, you know, insurance companies make opiates and addictive medicines very, very inexpensive. You can get hydrocodone for, you know, under a dollar. It's very inexpensive mm. to get addictive medicines. But if I, as a provider, am worried about a patient getting addicted to a medicine and I try to prescribe something that is safer, that's not addictive, it's often not on their insurance plan or too expensive, unaffordable. Mm. That should not be. And so yeah. the those things need to change. But I do think that the model is moving more towards a cash-based fee-for-service. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's wild <laughs> to be like, whoa, we're in this interesting time. And I also think that there are more and more people that are interested in looking at alternatives, you know, functional medicine, integrative medicine, Ayurveda, yeah. Chinese medicine, Tibetan medicine, right? There's all these these other things coming coming to light, you know. Well, I I see Ayurveda and, becoming yeah. more familiar yes. to people. Yeah. Yeah, as providers and as people, we we do need each other and uh, I recognize I am part of a network of healers. I am certainly not the be all end all, but I am one piece. And, you know, I don't know Ayurvedic medicine, but I rely on someone like Hannah for that. And I, I don't know acupuncture, but I rely on those, you know, those specialists. And so I, I think to truly help patients, we have to say, hey, go to your chiropractor for this. Come to me for the yeah. nutrition and, and or, or see the functional nutritionist and let me point you in the right direction. But let me do the genetic testing and the history and kind of get you started. But we all need each other. You need your friends. You need your family. Now is not the time to be isolated. And I'm just so excited to be able to share with people, you know, there is there is help beyond what medicine has been offering and more and more doctors are hearing patients say we want more it's it mm -hmm. just takes courage to step outside of that box so yes yes i have loved the opportunity um with many of the folks that i work with as as clients to be in in conversation with their doctors you know that some mm -hmm. of them are like ayurveda i've never heard of that Psh. But then others are like, oh, tell me about that. Or what you've been doing is clearly working, right? Yeah. What are you doing? Like the doctors that are curious about mm -hmm. you know, how they are yes. no longer diabetic or no longer need statins or their blood pressure is under control or they lost 30 pounds or whatever it is right. that, that they're like, huh, what have you done? And some doctors are mm -hmm. not interested at all. It's, it's very, right. very interesting. But I love when when there's openness and yes and we all like i can't do what i can't run the labs or prescribe or whatever so you know those pieces it is a mm -hmm. community effort for all of us to be able to show up mm -hmm. in support of somebody's health and healing that it's not mm -hmm. a competition it's a like community net like we got you yes. right? Like, right we can all support you together mm -hmm. yeah yeah well, thank you so much, Lisa, for being here today. It's been such a pleasure to talk with you and congratulations you. on your new start in 2022. And we'll post your website with this interview so folks can find you if they're interested in connecting with you further. Do you want to say Wonderful. anything else? Well, I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you to my friend that is in your um, yeah, Amy. Vitality Circle, Amy Wood, for introducing me to you, Hannah. And just, I'm just so thankful to reach out with other healers and join hands together to be able to make people well. So I look forward to helping anyone that needs me and, um, and to talking again. So thank you, Hannah. Great. Yeah, thank you. Really grateful. And yeah, let's be in touch. We'll see you soon. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.